Good morning, friends. Welcome to Shepherd of the Hills United Methodist Church. So glad that you are here. Thank you, Jan, for getting us started with our worship, with our, uh, our prelude. Um, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we are rejoicing and glad to be together in it. So glad you're here. A welcome to those of you who are online as well. We are uh, grateful for your presence. You can turn around and wave at them if you'd like and let them see your beautiful faces. Today is a special day for lots of reasons. It's Palm Sunday, certainly, and we celebrate uh, that, that day with, uh, with Jesus and the disciples as they make their way into Jerusalem. Um, we are also then turning from Palm Sunday toward um, the remembrance of Jesus' time with the disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane. Um, and that will be the focus of the second part of our worship today, is that sense of, uh, of, of Jesus um, inviting his disciples to be in prayer with him and him being tempted to let the, pa the cup pass from him. But he remains steadfast, and we'll talk about some of that dynamic during our message this morning. We're welcoming new members today. We celebrate their desire to become a part of this congregation. Some of them have been here for a while already. Some of them are relatively new, and uh, we look forward to that time of welcoming new members. It is also UMCOR Sunday. Uh, UMCOR stands for the United Methodist Committee on Relief. There's a little bit of information about it in your uh, bulletin at the front, on the front of the, the gray insert. There's also a uh, special Sunday uh, envelope if you would like to make a gift this morning for the United Methodist Committee on Relief. And we're going to be seeing a video in just a moment that tells about the, the essential, important work of the United Methodist Committee on Relief and the ways that it reaches out on our behalf to folks who are going through difficult times. Um, it seems like I'm forgetting to say something else, but I don't know what it is, so I'm going to invite the, the tech folks to go ahead and run the video of... Evacuation for zone it's Tropical Cyclone Deneo, and it's expected to become... This is by far worse than any mouse thing. There's an old definition of a disaster, and that's to be without a star. And the thing that happens many times after disasters is that the power goes out in some places, and people can actually see the stars. But they can also see the stars in one another. Peace that would pass his understanding, and with leadership that would guide people through their time of need. AMCOR, the United Methodist Committee on Relief, is the disaster and the development uh, arm of the whole United Methodist Church. When you give to AMCOR, you give 100% to the project you are supporting and to the disaster you want to respond to. This is only possible because on AMCOR Sunday, the United Methodist people raise funds so that the administrative cost of AMCOR are already covered. Well, UMCOR, of course, responds to emergencies with funding, training, and expertise. But we're mostly known for being in it for the long haul. Uh, we work alongside the conferences as they set up projects and programs to try to see families and individuals through to their recovery, which sometimes takes months and most often years. We're very busy. We're a very small team but we work hard then. UMCOR exists because of the donation of its members, it, the UMC people. So if there is a million people giving a $1 each, it makes more than one person giving 10,000. UMCOR has been for more than 75 years in this business of being hope, of being there for people in need in the moment of disaster when they have lost everything. And through AMCOR, the United Methodist people are hope in these situations. You know, walls are coming down, um, people are, are coming together. And they don't have power yet, but they're still finding ways to feed each other. And that feeds the soul, not just the body. Lift up those 
who have fallen. What a privilege it is to be part of this important ministry of the United Methodist Church, to be able to say we're there, we bring hope, and we bring healing. As people are helping their neighbor and helping each other in their community, they begin to see that the love of God has not left them. It's right there. So UMCOR wants to support that wonderful thing that can happen after disasters. UMCOR wants to be there with the people who are noticing the stars in one another, and they're noticing God's grace all around them. Good morning. It's good to see everybody here on Palm Sunday. Would you please stand for the call to worship? And we'll all recite together. Merciful God, as we enter Holy Week, turn our hearts again to Jerusalem and to the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Stir up within us the gift of faith that we may not only praise him with our lips, but may follow him in the way of the cross. Please remain standing for our hymn of praise. This morning it's All Glory, Lord, and Honor. And if you want to follow on your hymn, book, it's number 280, the first four verses.
right, I'll try this again. I'd like to invite the kids to come and join me. I'm going to be right here, and, I, and I'd like to invite the kids. Come on down. Hi, Emma. Uh, come on in. Um, we are going to, here, I want, I want you to all think about, like, right here, because we're going to do some action. So be right here, and I'm going to, I have my computer so I can tell the story, and I'm going to have it right here, and you brought your friends like I thought you would. Super duper. All right. All right, so as we're going to act out a story today, and um, this morning, uh, I remind us that we are in a season of Lent, and Lent is a time for us to get closer to God, and thinking about things that are closer, you know what's coming close next week? You know what? It is. It's Easter. Anybody getting like new Easter clothes or anything like that? Or Easter baskets? Do you have Easter baskets at your place? Oh, okay. All right. Well, I have a story that I'd like to invite you to help me tell. It's an action story. So if you like to move your legs, move your bodies, this is perfect for that. So here's the story. Uh, it's about Jesus and prayer, and this is... Um, we often think about prayer as being kind of a quiet and uh, you keep to yourself, but prayer can be lots of different things and lots of different movements. So I'm going to invite you uh, to tell me that, tell, well, help to tell the story. And when I say the word action, that means there's an action that's going to follow to for you to think about and for me too to think about how we would act that out. Okay? So for example, if I say action, walk, what would we do? Walk. We would walk. Yeah, just think about a walking action. And we all walk differently, too. So however you like to walk, you walk. Or fly, as you told me your uh, unicorn does. All right, so that's an example. All right, so here's the story about Jesus praying in the garden. Jesus and the disciples' action walked. So we walk into a garden named Gethsemane, and he told his disciples, action, sit. If you want to sit, you can sit all the way on the floor or halfway there. And that's how a dolphin sits, yes. He said, sit while I go to pray. What would be a prayer, way a prayer posture? You could fold your hands, fold your arms, yes. Very good, okay. Then Jesus said, Okay, sit here while I pray. Jesus and two others walked. Action, walk. So we get back up, and they walked with Jesus a little way. And then Jesus said, stay here and keep watch. What would be keeping watch? Do you know what a keep watch would look like? How would you keep watch for something? Yep, watching closely. Yes, I like that one. Yeah, sometimes you need to get the sun out of your eyes to watch. So he said, keep watch. Then Jesus went to a spot to action, pray. So what would the pray prayer one look like? Folding your arms. Jesus said, my father, if it's possible, take suffering away from me. However, it's not what I want, it's what you want. So Jesus, action, stood up, which we're already doing, except for Isabel, who's sitting down, and he walked over to his disciples. So we're walking one more time, or flying, and this time he found them action sleeping. What would be an action sleeping? Okay, that's a good one. Yeah, lay your head on a pillow. Couldn't you stay awake with me for one hour, asked Jesus. Two more times, Jesus' action walked over by himself. Two more times, he went to pray. Prayer, action, prayer, very good. Two more times, he stood up and walked back to the disciples to find the disciples sleeping. So here we are sleeping again. That's a good sleeping one, too. One of Jesus' friends named Judas led the soldiers into the garden, and this time they action marched in. What would be a good march? That's a good one. Making lots of noise. Yeah. They marched in. Jesus could have tried, we won't do this one, to run, 
But Jesus stood there and said, friend, come and do what you are to do. And that's the end of our story. So sit down with me for a second, if you can, or sit on your knees or however you like to sit. There is a lot of action when we think about prayer in this story. Jesus could have done things an easy way, but he, he chose to, um, he didn't run away when he could have run away out of the garden. He um, chose to do things God's way, and, and that changed the world. And you know, when it comes to things like prayer, sometimes we um, find places Jesus went to find a place where he could listen to God, and that was in a garden. Can you think of a place that would be quiet, that that you could hear God's voice? Do you have a quiet place? Emma, do you have a quiet place at your house? What would be a quiet place for you? Backyard. Oh, I bet that's wonderfully quiet. All right. What would be a quiet place for you? Mm -hmm. Ah, that sounds like a nice quiet place. All right. Do you have a quiet spot? What's a quiet spot in your place? Sometimes? Yeah, that sounds great. That's great. That's great. Well, quiet places are places that we can hear things and hear God's voice. Well, I'd like to invite you to share um, in in this prayer with me. And this is a repeat after me prayer. So what repeat what I say. Loving God, help us to know we can always talk to you. Give us the faith to do things your way. Amen. Thank you very much for sharing with me today. And you can head right back up to your seats if you'd like. Or fly back if you're a unicorn or swing back if you are a grape dolphin. Wow, I'm impressed. They're a vocal bunch. They did that responsive prayer really well. I want to invite, we, have, we are welcoming new members this morning, and if you are part of that group that is uh, going to join the church today, I invite you to come up at this time. Don't be shy. They're all sitting there. Come right on up, and we're going to have you just, it's going to take most of the front, so go ahead and maybe from here on over to the wall, go ahead and stand in a line. We'll see how well they take instructions. We did not practice this, so... This is the test. Yeah, you can go there. You can go there if you want. All right, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Wow. What a group. The Christian life is, is rarely, if ever, I'm going to say is never a solo life. It's not a life we live alone. It's a life that we live in community, that we learn from each other, we grow with each other, we serve together. Um, And so it is imperative that as Christian folks, we find a place where we're able to, to live out our faith, a community where we feel like God is at work and through which we can serve God as well. Friends, these folks have found that community here in, at Shepherd of the Hills United Methodist Church. And we are grateful for them, but for us, because it's not a them and us, it's a we. And we are all blessed by one another, and we are blessed by you all. Um, as you notice, some of these folks have been here a while and are just now getting around to joining the church. But some of the folks are are relatively new as well, and so it is with joy that we welcome you and celebrate your uh, deciding to be a part of this community as a way to live out your Christian faith. 
Pastor Joyce is going to uh, drill you with the questions. This at all, did we? So here's here's uh, uh, just the uh, official question to to seal the deal today. And the answer is the answer is I do. <laughs> do you promise, friends, to be faithful members of this congregation of Shepherd of the Hills United Methodist Church? to share in its ministry through your prayers, through your presence, through your gifts, through your service, and your witness. And so fulfill the call, your calling to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. If so, answer, I do. I do. Oh, that sounds so wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm gonna. Uh, we're not gonna. I'm not gonna try to introduce them all, but I'm gonna have them pass this down and just uh, so you can put a name and face together. The names mostly are in um, in the insert in the bulletin as well. But if you would just share your name, um, if we go much farther than that, we'll be here all day. So if you could share your name and then just pass it right on down, that'd be great. Vanessa Reese. Mark Reese. Ellen Preston. Judy Moon. John Adams. Gloria Adams. Mary Lynn Matthews. Jeff Matthews. Cindy Asker. Bonnie Hoy. Perry Hamlet. Rita Osborne. Wow, what a great group. And there are some folks who are uh, be, be joining today as well in absentia, but we'll recognize them and have them stand in front of you a little bit later. Tiffany Deliberto um, is out of town this week. Scott Covey is uh, still at Bella Terra recovering and, and rehabilitation. Uh, Michael Kurd and Linda Rice um, were, were hoping to be here, planning to be here, but Michael um, has ended up in the hospital, and so we want to add him to our prayers as well. Um, and so uh, that rounds out our, our group for this time. And uh, you are a special group. You bring gifts to this congregation that are innumerable, and we just celebrate so much your presence here. It just gives chills up my spine. Congregation, we have a uh, rubric in which we will welcome them. That It'll be on the screen as well as in, uh, it's printed in the bulletin as well. Um, let's join together as we welcome these folks. We give thanks. We have certificates for all of you. Joyce and I are going to pass these out. We're hoping it won't take too long, but stay here as we welcome you. We'll try to get on. I don't think we have them for everybody, but we'll have them for most. Gloria, Mark, Vanessa, Judy. I guess she got most of them. I can take a few more. Bonnie. <laughs> and Mark, I guess I just had. Yeah. Let's welcome them. Amen. You may go ahead and return to your seats. Thank you for coming up. Thank you. 
Welcome, 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 yes, welcome. Okay, you have to be up here with the choir. I, it's just so, we're so blessed, we really are. Anyway, um, little introduction. The, the scripture reading is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 14, verses 32 through 52. This week, we join Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, in the moment when a chain of events that cannot be halted. Once Jesus is taken into custody, there is no going back. So we pause a moment with him in the garden just before his arrest, and we feel with him the temptations that arise when facing difficult circumstances. To run, to hide, to use whatever power we have to change things. So true. Fight it, perhaps even bargain with God. We walk among the sleepy disciples who just cannot grasp what is about to happen. And now the scripture. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death, 
remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for all, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. He keep awake and pray that you may not come. I don't know, I think it. He came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough! The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the trail, arrived. And with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted and fled. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. The word of God for the people of God. Be seated. Our art this morning, as we put ourselves into the picture, is from a community called the Mafa community in northern Cameroon. This was from an initiative taken to help the people there learn the the gospel. French Catholic missionary Francois Vidil worked with Mafa Christian communities in Cameroon to create an enormous catalog of paintings depicting the life of Jesus as an African man, as someone they could relate to. The plan was to build a resource that would help Mafa people to teach from the Bible in a way that connected with their community. The life of Jesus Mafa took a long time to produce. They were very intentional. They formed a team of local church leaders, theologians, and a carefully selected artist. The team would spend time in Mafa communities, reading Bible passages, and getting people to reenact them. Vidil and his team would photograph their reenactments as the artist sketched them. These sketches and photographs became the basis of the final paintings of this collection. What an amazing way to produce art for the sake of mission. As we view today's story in the garden, is there one that, I think there's one farther out, isn't there? Maybe not. All right. Um, As we view today's work of art, We see Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. We join Jesus as he prays to God in agony, knowing that the cross is before him. 
The light illuminates his face as he prays. He's asked his disciples to join, to pray, to support him, but they fall asleep. And if we take a closer look, we see one of the disciples with his head in his folded hands, still seated, trying his best to stay awake. Too much wine, perhaps. Maybe I'm so sleepy because I'm just so very tired. This week is taking a toll on me. We have been watching our every step, wondering when the other shoe would drop, afraid that the commotion stirred up about Jesus will result in something terrible. And I have been on the edge ever since we've gotten here. Oh, but oh my, that parade. Who would have thought that this man I met on the shores of my fishing spot would turn out to be three years of nonstop surprises? The entrance into Jerusalem was more amazing than all of it combined. And I felt sure that I was a part of something that was going to change everything. But now, now I'm not so sure. Not everyone, is, it turns out, is as pleased about Jesus' arrival here. And we have been under scrutiny for days. And then tonight, at the table... Jesus revealed that one of us was about to hand him over. And I am noticing who is not here with us in the garden. And I'm wondering if maybe Jesus was right. I just don't want to accept that these people who have become my family could turn against one another in this pressure. Fear is threatening our bonds. So why put ourselves out here into the open? I need to stay awake. I need to keep watch. And I, I even have my sword. I know, I know Jesus told me not to bring it, but come on. All he seems to think about is the need to pray. And he asked us to pray with him. So yes, I am praying. I'm praying fervently. But is it enough? How can God help us if soldiers arrive? And yet, I am so sleepy. Will you pray with me? O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts and minds together be acceptable in your sight. 
May your word for us this day come through. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Howard Thurman was a theologian, a pastor, an author, um, and a mystic. And he tells the story remembering back to his days in seminary when he had stayed extra late studying at the seminary and was walking home late at night. And he noticed something he had never noticed before. He noticed the sound of water running. He had taken this route many times and he had never previously heard so much as a drop of water. The next day, Thurman asked his professor, was sharing about what had happened the night before and the strangeness of, of hearing that water running. And the professor said, oh, you didn't know. There's a canal that runs underneath the street. Because the noises of streetcars, automobiles, and passers-by were absent late at night, Howard Thurman was able to hear the sound of the water flowing beneath the surface. Thurman equated these sounds those sounds of automobiles and people talking and traffic, etc to the inner chatter within our minds that prevents us from being aware of God's presence. Quieting the surface noise in our minds is what Thurman urges his and us, his readers and us to do when he tells them, as he does throughout his writings, to center down that to center down is to allow the clutter to fall away, to allow our minds to listen in a new and significant way. Thurman knew that what attracts and what holds our attention determines how and when we will experience God. He says that in the total religious experience, we learn how to wait. We learn how to ready the mind and the spirit by centering down. And then he says, it is in the waiting, the brooding, the lingering, the tarrying timeless moments that the essence of the religious experience becomes most fruitful. It is here that we learn to listen, to swing wide the very doors of our being, to clear out the corners and the crevices of our lives so that when God's presence invades, we are free to enjoy God's coming to himself within us. I hope you recognize the significance of these words in Thurman's reflection as we sit with Jesus and his disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane. As we seek to tune into that undercurrent of God's love and presence and grace that is flowing and that we seek to, to tune into so that we might feel and hear and experience those living waters. Jesus knows exactly what this night will bring. And though he is absolutely tempted to his core, praying that the cup of suffering might be something that God will allow to pass him by, he too is also unwavering in his trust, saying after praying that that might be po if it might be possible to have this cup passed from him, nevertheless, not what I desire, O God, but your will 
is what I will follow. His prayers that night, along with the gravity of the situation weighing upon him, would have him centered down deeply in a way that would have certainly cleared the clutter and the chatter from his mind. And his hope is that the disciples will join him in that journey. This is praying in earnest. Indeed, in the Gospel of Luke, the writer reports of Jesus' sweat becoming like great drops of blood falling to the ground as he prays. Jesus is tempted. Jesus is struggling. It is here in Gethsemane, perhaps more than any other place in the Gospels, that we witness the humanity of Jesus on full display. This is a human being struggling with what it means to follow God completely. Not unlike Jacob, perhaps, Jesus wrestles with God through this long night and succumbs like the new Israel to the woundedness which brings forth a new community. Wrestling and woundedness, you will note, are not signs of weakness or lack of faith, but are integral parts of our walk with God. The word Gethsemane in Aramaic means oil press. And it would be natural to assume that on the Mount of Olives there would be this place identified as a garden with an oil press, the Garden of Gethsemane. And perhaps on this particular night, the name takes on an added significance. For an oil press, as it works, it would be using high pressure and heat to squeeze and extract oil out of a plant product. Of course, this night, Jesus takes upon himself the full weight of humanity's sinfulness and rejection of God's love and begins the process of transforming the pain, suffering, violence of that rejection into the sweet oil of redemption and transformed lives. And I invite you to hear this plainly. For some of us perhaps grew up hearing something different. That this is not God's rejection or turning away from our sinfulness. It is God entering into in the fullest and deepest way possible our inability to get it right, embracing us even in our alienation and pain and loving us all the more passionately in our sinfulness and in our separation from God. For now, Jesus stands alone. The discipleship community has failed to stand strong with him for the vision of the new world that he offers, this kingdom that he is, has lived out and showed and, and proclaimed through not only his words but his life. In this moment, he stands alone as the faithful one, as the others in the disciple community fall aside. John Calvin urged his followers in Geneva to recognize how even the best of us are prone to miss the urgency of Jesus' struggle and yet to also realize even more deeply that Jesus saves us even when we nod off, even when we fail to remain faithful. Jesus' redemption stands true. My invitation to us this week 
is to take some very intentional time to center down. To find some space and time to allow the noise and the clutter of your mind and the world to be silenced. And in the stillness to recognize and hear the currents of living water flowing just beneath the surface of your life. And to recognize that God is there that God is here, and that God is seeking our attention. Amen. Lift up before you our uh, list that is on the peach colored uh, insert. And each week we have um, a continuous names being asked of us to be included in our circle of prayer. So please look over these names and continue to pray for them. Include them in your, in your care. And we also um, want to add the ministry of UMCOR this week as we pray for them in disaster relief. And now may the Lord be with you. Let us pray the prayer of yearning. It's in your bulletin and on the screen. Triumphant Lord and God, we come to welcome and worship your Son this day. Yet as the words of Scripture echo through our souls, we realize how our behavior parallels that of the people of Jerusalem. One day we are celebrating Christ's arrival. The next we are criticizing him for the demands he places on us. Gracious God, for our faith is seldom mature. At times we resist our message. At times we treat it carelessly, producing a shallow belief. Yet at other times we compromise and shape our faith around convenience. Loving Lord, we confess our involvement in these sins. Cleanse and renew us by the consistent love and life of Jesus, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, on this holy day of Palm Sunday and Passion, we have so many mixed feelings. We remember your son's triumphant entrance into Jerusalem with the people shouting praises and waving palm branches. We join them with our own praises, and yet we remember, too, that this wonderful parade for your son becomes another kind of parade where officials and booing crowds come to the surface. And instead of crowds singing praises, they shout to crucify him. And our hearts are broken by these shouts and the pain and suffering he bore that day. And yet we know that it is because of his choosing to enter Jerusalem and taking the path he knew he was taking 
there is hope, grace, love, and salvation. And there are still many in need of hope for your world. There are still many in need of grace and many in need of love. So enter our lives, our churches, our cities, our countries once again. Heal us. This morning we pray for those recovering from illnesses, those who are grieving. Heal our earth. Make us agents of change. Bless those working through the ministry of UMCOR today that our action may heal and restore. Transform us and lift us beyond where we are now to rise into the vision that you have for us. Renew us and give us vision and hope in those places where we face those tough challenges. And draw us closer to you in this journey of Holy Week. Empower us with strength and courage and with the assurance that you are indeed with us. Receive us as we pray the prayer the Lord Jesus taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. In our, um, in our membership vows, we, we pledge to share our witness. And so, once again, we lift up those opportunities to witness as part of our faith and our offering every week. And uh, so, I want to uh, share with you that uh, if, if you are uh, really into Easter and Holy Week, we have great opportunities for you to enter into the story. So this week, uh, as we continue our, our, our uh, theme of telling the story, entering the story, and using art to do so, uh, our Living Last Summer Supper uh, musical pageant is going to be uh, this Thursday, and it is uh, based upon Leonardo da Vinci's famous painting. And this is a musical. So the choir has been working very, very hard as well to tell the story in drama and in music. And there's a yellow insert, and I invite you to take that um, home and maybe post it someplace or use that to share uh, with someone so that uh, you can invite them to come as, they, as we tell the story. And then after that, uh, on Good Friday, there are two opportunities for worship. One is during the daytime with our interfaith uh, annual Stations of the Cross. That will be Friday at 11 o'clock, and that will start at Sandtown Park, and the information is behind me. It ends at the Catholic Church, and so there will be different Stations of the Cross uh, from the park all the way to the church, and we'll be stopping at different places and sharing, um, sharing the story of, of the passion of Jesus. And then in the evening time, we'll be joining our friends from New Promise Lutheran and Good Shepherd Presbyterian for a tenebrae service. And that is, uh, tenebrae is the service of shadows. And as we tell the, the, um, the scriptures of uh, Jesus on the cross, then the lights are darkened and we leave in uh, the shadow of the cross. So that is going to be at Good Shepherd Presbyterian Church, 7 o'clock. Then you can spend all day here at the church and celebrate Easter. Maybe you, you, you say that anyway. Yes, I'm spending all day at the church. So you can get your Easter on and come on at 6.45 to the uh, sunrise service. That's going to be uh, outdoors at the fire pit right behind this building. 
and uh, we'll be gathering around the fire pit, we'll watch the sun rise, we'll sing together, we'll hear the, the Easter story. So plan accordingly, it's all outdoors, and bring a lawn chair, and, and if need be, if it looks dark, uh, bring a, a flashlight so you don't trip. Then at 8.30, we'll continue with our uh, praise music, with our praise band at 8.30 for our informal worship for Easter. And just as Jesus ate with his disciples after the resurrection, we will share in a pancake breakfast at 9.15 right out here in the courtyard. And followed by Easter worship, and notice the time is 10.15. That'll give us... Um, enough time from 9.15 to 10.15 to feed everybody and clean up as well. So come prepared for breakfast and then lively, beautiful worship. Everyone is getting prepared. The music will be wonderful. And um, it will we'll worship again at 10.15. And uh, finally, if you haven't uh, seen our first, hopefully first annual uh no, uh, in your bulletin, there is uh, information about our first annual women's tri-church women's luncheon coming up, and there is a deadline coming up, and uh, it'll be a wonderful opportunity to gather with our sisters in Christ, with our other churches, and uh, please see that information so that you can sign up. And once again, I saw out of the corner of my eye, I saw some people walking across the uh, sidewalk just now getting ready for coffee hour. So uh, please uh, take some time and get to know one another over some refreshments right here in our fellowship hall. And it's a beautiful day. We can gather outdoors as well. I did notice that we have a rehearsal for our Living Last Supper also after worship. And that is for those of you who are growing beards. And uh, y'all know who you are, who will be in our Living Last Supper up here this week. And that is uh, the opportunities for this week. And I'll turn to Pat as uh, she leads us in this morning's offering. Will the ushers please come forward for the morning offering? And while they're taking in the offering, I'll ask you to please fill out the attendance pad found in the back of the middle aisle seats and pass them down to your pew mates. Thank you.
We thank you, Christ Jesus, for your steadfast, faith, steadfast faithfulness and your humble leadership in the world. Bless the gifts we return to you, that they may guide others to follow you and walk humbly in your ways. Amen. Please remain standing for our final hymn, Jesus Walk This Lonesome Valley, found in your faith hymnal number 2112. to reconcile that but I would the, what I said before we had the folks join the church was that we don't stand by ourselves <laughs> it's a sermon for a later date I do want to invite those who joined the church this morning I'm going to give you a little bit of a head start if you are able I'm going to invite you I think I told you the back door but if you would start to move uh, toward these doors and line up. We're going to have a little receiving line there. And I would encourage you, even if you're not staying for treats, to go ahead and move, you, you guys who are new, or our new members joining today. Go ahead and move. Line up kind of along here. I invert, encourage everyone to go out that way just to greet them. Say welcome. Glad you're here. There's a cake over there, by the way, as well, that says welcome new members. And... Uh, so we hope that you'll, the new members especially, will get a piece of that cake. For the rest, where'd we all go? <laughs> Friends, go into this week. I, I do want to encourage you to take advantage of. Easter becomes so much fuller and more joyous when we have walked these last days along with Jesus through Monday, Thursday, and the Last Supper, Good Friday, the, the way of the, of the cross. Um, and so I encourage you to take advantage of those opportunities so that when we return next Sunday, we will have the fullness of joy that God has placed in us. Go in peace, go in joy, go in love. Amen. Go this way to welcome everybody. Everybody.